Welcome back to the Serengeti. The team is heading out to the southern plains where the migration has come full circle. With life still far from normal in much of the world, the Serengeti is thriving. The wildebeest have lots of young, the plains are lush and teeming with life. Safari guides John B. Kibuyo and Richard Knocker, award-winning photographer Paul Joynson Hicks, and inspirational filmmaker Eliza Powell set off once more to take you into the thick of the action. We hope this helps to brighten your day and remind you that we're all still here, ready to welcome you back on safari as soon as you're ready to travel again. Good morning, Goro Goro! Wow, nearly blew the pants off that acacia. How are you doing this morning, Jumbi? Very well, very well, Paolo. Okay, <laughs> excellent. So we are heading back out to those Macau Plains and we're gonna try and see if we can find that cheetah mama and her cubs again and see if she's gonna hunt in the morning because uh, we don't think she would have hunted overnight. Fingers crossed. It's moving its feet up and down, stirring up the bottom, stirring up the algae and then filtering that water. Might be able to make out there, they've got webbed feet just like a duck or a goose. One thing that really does well here is spirulina, the blue-green algae, and that's the number one food for the lesser flamingo. Spirulina algae contain lots of carotene, and carotene is the pigment that gives lesser flamingos their colour. Lesser flamingos are filter feeders, and they have to filter out all the algae in the water. Their tongue acts like a piston, so they move the tongue up and down in the bill, drawing water in and then squeezing it out again, leaving behind a mouthful of delicious blue-green algae. But they're doing this something like ooh, more than 10 times a second. I hope you can see that fluttering on the throat as the tongue flutters up and down in the beak. I'm scanning, looking for that mama and three cubs which we left her yesterday here, around this area. And um, I can't find her. As John B. mentioned, we were looking for that mama from yesterday with her three cubs, but we didn't find them. Look who we found instead. Fantastic. So one of those two has now, those two have separated and uh, um, they're both females, so it's really interesting. Possibly mother and daughter now with their own territories. Very beautiful, lovely morning night. So we've been following her for a while. Now she's found herself a little bit of a, a raised viewpoint, so she can see what's out there. And she has to stop every now and again just to make sure that she keeps her energy levels up and rests, so that when it's hunt time, She's got lots of energy left. So our cheetah baby decided that it wasn't time for a hunt. And look what we've come and found instead. So lines are going to be hot in the sun out here. This is, this is the Doda which you, it always catch your eyes out when you're driving out in the plane. It's, it's, it's a parasite plant of which it grows on host other plants. But apart from depleting the nutrient from other plants, it's also working as a communicator for other plants. So when the herbivores like uh, uh, caterpillars and herbivores grazing on other plants and give the information to other plants that, you know, we're getting overproduced. Isn't that interesting? So this rolling is a really good anti-parasite thing, isn't it, Rob? Yeah, so it just helps them, gives them a coating of dust, which irritates the parasites, ticks, lice, mites. And it even uh, blocks those breathing pores of theirs as well, doesn't it, and weakens them? Yeah. So in an earlier series, we showed you oxpeckers riding on the back of a giraffe. Um, and they are obviously picking ticks off the skin of the giraffe. These guys we're looking at here are wattled starlings, and they're not taking the parasites. They're hitching a ride on the back of the zebra, and then they'll fly down to catch the 
grasshoppers and other insects that are being disturbed by the zebra as they walk through the grass. So these are the wonderful nests of the vitaline masked weaver. He's had to make two nests here, one male, so presumably the female wasn't very impressed with his first effort and made him try again. But isn't that a lovely structure? Oh, here he is. Look at this. Isn't this amazing? Isn't this extraordinary? This guy's only got two feet and a beak to weave with. He's got to hang on with one foot. Look at him work. Isn't this a beautiful thing? Surely she's got to love it this time. Okay, so this dung beetle, right, walks into a bar. And he goes up to the bartender and he said, excuse me, is this, is this stool taken? <laughs> with, with thanks again to Rob, who's the source of all puns at the moment, because I am completely punned out. But if you've got a pun that you would like Ricardo to share with us, please let us know. Oh, Put it in the comments down there. Please. Because we really need some better ones. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.